Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to uh, another edition of It's the Movie of the Week show from Empire Magazine. I'm editor Dan Murphy. Uh, with me, as usual, is reviews editor James at JJ Jennings. Hello. And uh, senior editor David Michael Brown. Uh, and this week, we're talking about Wolf Creek 2. But before we do that, just a quick reminder that Captain America with the big preview for 2014 is on sale now. Get it while you can. Dave, why don't you run us through, or uh, take us down the sandy track to Wolf Creek. Yes, uh, Mick Taylor is back. It's been a, a few years since he last uh, terrified the Outback. Uh, Australia's favourite serial killer has returned in the form of John Jarrett, who played him in the first film. Uh, once again directed by Greg McLean, who we last saw he made the Killer Crocodile movie Rogue, which is a bit of a, a flop at the box office, to be polite. So I think he's kind of gone for the sequel to hopefully get some money back. I think it made it still overseas, didn't it? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but he's back and this film starts with a bang and just gets the adrenaline and pumping straight away. Uh, it's got an awesome pre-credit sequence. We're reintroduced to Mick and it's Mick Taylor versus some pl policemen who are pretty fantastic actually, really well played. Uh, and it's a really funny, really tense opening to the film and it, from that moment on, this is great, great stuff. Uh, when we join the story proper, uh, a couple of German hitchhikers are enjoying the outback uh, and one night they kind of get to the end of their hiking day and pitch tent and uh, Mick Taylor happens to be driving along as he is his wont and he sees the uh, glowing light of their tent and thinks he go thinks he go and have a visit and uh, you know as we we all know Mick he doesn't like the foreigners too much and he doesn't like them invading his beautiful Australian land and especially uh, Germans yeah especially <laughs> Germans and when he he meets them let's say it doesn't go well and results <laughs> in uh, the young lady of, uh, in the, uh, the German pair of hitchhikers just beaten, battered and bruised, uh, staggering down this road, just delirious and terrified and just needs help. Uh, we then cut to uh, Brit Paul Hammersmith, played by uh, Aussie Ryan Corr, and uh, Paul is driving along, uh, doing a bit of a road trip and sees this poor girl and he does what any chivalrous British boy will do and he jumps out of the car and offers her his help. Uh, which is obviously the thing you want everyone in the world to do in that situation. But in this case, it was a bad move. Uh, <laughs> Mick, from this moment on, it turns into a can of mouse chase. Mick wants this guy's blood. He chases him. It turns into this massive, really exciting and incredibly tense uh, chase movie. Uh, I think Greg McLean's definitely taken like the uh, the Mad Max template when it comes to sequels. There's a lot of uh, mm. Steven Spielberg's duel in it as well. Oh, Just most definitely, yeah. Because uh, Mick drives a like a prime mover truck. Yeah, Mad Max two again with the prime mover truck. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Ryan Cause sort of like a, in a in a Jeep, which was a nice piece of product placement, and they'll be very happy. That <laughs> they'll little, be chuffed. That little car does very very well. <laughs> um, look, it's. Uh, and that is a terrific sort of centerpiece, literally, to the film is the uh, the car chase d during the night and the mm. day between these two guys. And then um, we, let's have a look at a clip here. Ryan Corr is fantastic in this. Most people will know him from um, uh, the Australian sitcom or dramedy, I suppose you call it, Pack to the Rafters. Mm. But uh, he's a man with an amazing future. I think he's currently shooting uh, The Water Diviner with Russell Crowe as one of the leads. So, you know, he's got a massive future. Uh, just, you know, check out his stylings here when uh, he's recovering from the car chase.
Look, also evidenced by that clip is that uh, is Greg McLean's fantastic sh photography of the outback. It looks fantastic. I mean, you know, it's it's kind of, it's kind of off, it's, it's hard to stuff up. But uh, when we did uh, the cover story with Wolf Creek last month, we you know he was talking about how uh, you know he, movies like Wake and Fright um, uh, and We of the Never and Never and stuff yeah. were touched with touchstones for the for the, the color palette and the tone of the film. And the uh, outback is you know it, it being used as a character in the film itself. Yeah, it really is. Mm. You know, as well as breeding a character like Mick and the kind of you know machismo bully that every one of us has met at some stage or another. Yeah. But um, not that you know we talk about car chases and cinema photography, but for any fans of the original who are listening to this going, well, there's no horror or no nastiness. The film ends as you would expect us to do. There's this like the most warped, <laughs> scary version of the citizenship test you are ever going to watch. And yeah, anyone so, who's waiting to do it. I'm sure it's what John Howard had in mind when he, when he imposed that, wasn't it? It's a, uh, yeah, it gets brutal. Mm. It gets brutal as you would expect. But it's, mm. it's much more, it's a faster paced, much more um, action-y kind of film. Aliens to the horror of Alien. Yes. Um, JJ, what did you think? Yeah, look, it's, you know, uh, Greg McLean's definitely aimed to make a very different sequel here, admirably. Um, it's, uh, you know, like I said, it doesn't try and repeat the first one. It just makes the second one much more of a thriller chase film. I thought that the gore and the horror stuff in this was kind of like meted out a lot, a lot sort of like spaced apart. Yeah. It wasn't kind of like, you know, a, a big brutal sequence. It's like there's probably about four in instances in the film where the blood flies and it gets a bit gory. Mm -hmm. um, you guys saw the, the MA cut, which is getting released in cinemas. I got to see the R-rated uh, uncut version of it. And uh, I've got to say, I watched pretty much all of those sequences through my fingers. Uh, not yeah, a big fan of the a couple door. of minutes that came out of the movie, mm. so I can imagine the viscera must have been Cause it's deep pretty, and red. Pretty full on, pretty yeah. full on. Mm. But having said that, it's it's the rest of the film which I found a joy. It's just like it's just this great thrilling outback action chase film. Yeah, it's terrific. Um, and the, you know, and the sequence where you know the citizenship test between Paul and Mick is really uh, <laughs> is funny as hell, mm. you know, as well as being you know desperate. You know, you are laughing through mm. and has split a great fingers. You know, and has a great payoff as well. Yeah, that's yeah. that's Mr. right. Mr. Bradman. Look, I mean, the, uh, it's 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 an excellent sequel. Uh, I think the one big problem that I think we all had to a degree was the uh, the way it ends, which is rather abrupt. Um, I kept feeling there was another reel that could have been there, but uh, uh, and it, yeah, I I think it was it was there, there were certain outcomes McLean wanted, uh, and I think there could have been otherwise that to achieve those. We could have yeah. got those. Yeah, yeah, the the ending that they went with doesn't really hold up to much scrutiny. Uh, it's the the more you look at it, the more implausible it seems. Yeah. Uh, which is a real shame because mm. everything leading up until that point is great. Great. Um, and you come out scratching your head going, huh? Yeah. It leaves the film with a, like a bad taste in the mouth for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Which, you the Great Show got big hopes for this. That's why yeah. I think they've made it, taken it out from being yep. an R rated to an M rated, MA rated film. Whether that's going to alienate a little bit of the core but gain a whole bunch more, which will probably be the case, is up to scene. I mean, the original film, I think it was at 06 it came out. Mm. I can't remember the exact year, which is terrible. 05. 05. Yeah. There mm. you go. But it was the biggest selling Australian film of that year. And um, the biggest R-rated film of all time in Australia, The Wolf of Wall Street. That's right. Well, so It's almost a shame they didn't keep it as an R so they could battle it out again and Mick Taylor could take out Leonardo DiCaprio. So, budding filmmakers, mm. if you're going to make an R-rated film, put Wolf in the title, you're going to guarantee box office. <laughs> you could then. Yeah. Okay, so what are we going to give it, chaps? Look, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was the way he's, uh, Greg McLean had approached the sequel and made it different, but still kind of gave his core audience what they want was spot on, so four out of five from me. Yeah, look, uh, I think Mick Taylor's been elevated to an all-time great horror bad guy in this. He gets plenty of great one-liners. Mm. Lots of humour, black humour in this film, which I think also sets it apart from the first one. Uh, let down by the ending, but up until that point, I really enjoyed it, so it's four for me as well. Okay, cool, yeah. Look, we shot uh, John Jarrett for the cover, um, which you have, if you have a copy, you must try the viewer execution on it. It is very funny. Uh, and I'm going to throw to a clip of that there as I say this, just so that we can you know, rub it in if you didn't get it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and I think he's great in it. I think uh, Ryan Corr is fantastic. Fantastic, and I think the, the, the expertise on display is well and truly top notch until the ending, and it really jacked me off. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to give it three stars because today I'm feeling hard. Don't, don't <laughs> hold it against me. <laughs> uh, he's, he's coming for you. Yeah, yeah that's right. He knows where you live. <laughs> two fours uh, and a reluctant, but I think definite three for me uh, for Wolf Creek 2, which is opening in cinemas nationally today. Uh, and that's it for us this week. Uh, next week we'll be talking about... Is it Nebraska? Nebraska. Nebraska. Yes. Nebraska, a vastly different film in wide open spaces. Until then, bye for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>